Angie and Ollie, and I want to do another little clip as an extension of yesterday's, which was about knowing yourself and how to expand your capacity to be with yourself in life so that you have a container big enough to, to process and to experience life fully. So if you haven't seen that one, go back and, and look at the last post. And this is an extension of that, and this one is love yourself. Right? So first you develop the capacity to be with yourself and your feelings and life. And then you learn to love yourself. And that, sounds, that might sound cheesy, but here's the thing. Underneath everything we're going after, like underneath everything, is self-love. And even if we've traded it in for intellect or power or something, that's a substitute. It will never, it will never fill the bucket. So, you know, we've all heard you have to love yourself and it's like, but what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Well, I personally have had a lifelong journey of not feeling worthy of love at all to a place of really learning how to have my own back. And so I share that process with you. Now, I tend to be the overgiver historically, not anymore. And so I'm probably better to guide people of that nature um, because if if you historically have thought you had to take your needs, then the most expansive thing for you will be to give and to sacrifice, and then that will be the most expansive thing to do. If you historically have been someone who you know, gives away your energy and your life force, then the most expansive thing for you will be to honor your own energy and to set boundaries. Saying no to others is saying yes to you. So what I want to talk a little bit about today is how to use the inherent wisdom of your body to be the gatekeeper of your own life force and really begin to love yourself, to develop an allegiance towards yourself because no one else is going to take care of your energy. It's your responsibility. It's your ability to respond. So a simple exercise that for me had profound realizations is to take a day or a week or a month, I did it for a year, and just start noting, noticing and noting, if you have a little journal you wanna carry around with you, what expands you, what contracts you. So if you're having a conversation and all of a sudden you feel relaxed and open, then that's an expansive softening experience in your body. If somebody says something to you and you immediately feel a tightening in your belly or your throat or your chest, then that's a contracting feeling. It's a closing off feeling and you just start to notice nothing has to make sense yet you don't have to judge it and decide what to do with it yet you just start to notice internally if your body expands or contracts it can be the external stimuli people conversations it can be the internal conversations oh i just had this thought and it felt like this in my body and i did this many years ago for just a day before i decided to do it for a year and I found that little piece of paper, and it was so interesting because the, the conversation that contracted me, the relationship that contracted me was one that my mind told me was really important. And it took me years to realize that that was a toxic relationship for me. But my body knew. This is the place where you know before you know. And it's, it's your preconditioned wisdom. And we had this, we were in touch with this when we were younger, before we were told, no, this is who you like, and this is how you act, and this is good, and this is bad. We, we had, um, I mean, we didn't question it, right? And then over time, we start to lose trust in that because if that doesn't match up with this, then there must be something wrong with us. And I'm saying it's time for all of us to get back to this internal knowing because when you're in touch with your body and your heart, it's not like you're good and I'm bad. It's like everybody's taking care of themselves and respecting and loving. And what that ends up being is win, win, win circumstances and relationships. Like if I'm going to honor me, then that's going to be the truth for you, even if it hurts. And it's going to be a win for the world is what I've found. But first you have to notice. You have to begin to notice. And it's not like if you contract in a relationship that you have to cut it and never talk to that person again. It might mean that you need to take a break or have less experiences or more boundaries around that until that relationship shifts. And miraculously, they often will because what you're honoring in here will be reflected out here. Not always, but. So the other thing is to notice your energy level and to start to value it because you're the gatekeeper of your life force and that's your energy level. And if you just give and give and give, 
and it's not coming back in, then you're going to end up resentful. You're going to end up sick. You're going to end up drained, hurt. And so you have to start to notice, first of all, what drains you and what feeds you. Like, I didn't even know this when I started inquiring internally. I just did what I was supposed to do, what everybody else needed me to do. I was like, oh, this interaction actually really fills me up. Being in nature, going for a walk, hanging out with Ollie, talking to so-and-so. And, oh, these things that I thought for however many years I was supposed to do, they actually drain me. So what that means is when you start to pay attention to the energy in your body, you can tell if something's reciprocal, if something's energetically reciprocal or if it's not. And then you start to really value that because this is your life. And it, it's not actually helping another person if it's draining you because it's not going to fill their hole either unless it's reciprocal, unless it's in harmony. And so it's the internal work. And what's really beautiful about these two exercises that are kind of the same is that you're going into your own body to listen instead of trying to figure out everybody and everything else. And instead of trying to navigate the world to get what you want, you have an internal priority and everything becomes an opportunity to practice that, to come home to that, to start to listen to that and to care about it. And then you want to take love into action and you want to make choices based on if your body expands or contracts or if your energy goes down or it stays the same or it fills you up. And then another way that you can practice self-love is through boundaries, but I think we'll have that for another conversation. And people are afraid sometimes to say no, but saying no is often saying yes to the most important relationship that we'll ever have in our lives, which is with ourselves. And I think why we're here is to learn to listen to that and to be authentic, to be real. And so the know yourself part was developing a capacity to learn what's not you, to learn what's not real. And then you start to go inside and listen to what is you. And that's love.